I'm gonna do a quick little walk around, let y'all know what we got left. Um, yeah, it's dirty, but be a quick little rundown for some of you guys that are maybe new to, to air, air management, air ride, and kind of need a walk around. So we've got an aluminum, I think this is an eight gallon tank. I do recommend you getting an aluminum tank, especially, especially if you live in the South. Winter, summer, it's always humid in the South. No matter what you do, you're gonna get condensation in this tank. No matter how many water separators you got on here, no matter how many times you drain this tank, it's always gonna have condensation in it. Get an aluminum tank. Water will not hurt rubber in your valves. I'm sorry, people can say all they want. Water is not gonna hurt rubber. It doesn't hurt your tires. It's not gonna hurt the little rubber diaphragm in your bag. In your, I mean, I'm sorry, in your valve. What does hurt valves is trash, whether it be sand or if you have a metal tank, carbon steel tank, water and carbon steel create rust. Rust creates trash. I don't care if you have a filter between your valves and your tank, something's gonna get through and you're gonna have sticky valves. Another thing is if you run an engine driven compressor, engine driven compressors being a York or sand in pushes a little oil. Oil mixes with water, makes this little greasy stuff. I've never had it really hurt valves. I have had it make them a little sticky. Um, so that's a whole different, we'll talk about that if we ever do an engine driven compressor. What's up YouTube? We got something special that's gonna be coming up. Um, I'm gonna bring somebody out who has been behind the camera helping us out and has been really, really, really anxious about getting on one of our, our videos. So without any further ado, I'm gonna bring out my son, Buggy. All right, so this is an old pedal car that I converted into a stroller um, for Buggy back I actually started building on it before he was born. Me and uh, his Pop Pop built it. Over the years, it sat. Once he outgrew it, um, it has sat out in the rain and the weather and got all nasty. We're going to do a little father-son project. We're going to tear this thing down. We're going to sand it down. We're going to straighten it all up, weld up all the seams and everything. And I'm going to attempt to teach this little guy how to paint how to do some body work. We're actually gonna paint it like an old school lowrider, kind of like the roof of my OBS. We're actually gonna turn it, we're gonna keep it as a stroller like this. I think we're gonna actually turn it into like a uh, Bluetooth speaker. I think that'd be pretty cool, huh? Mm -hmm. So we can push it, you'd still be able to push it around shows. And I'm gonna let him pick all the colors. Uh, eventually, I've had the thought of eventually, instead of being pushed around, we might actually make this like an RC car with the uh with the bluetooth speaker it's gonna all this will be set up for bluetooth speakers and everything but thinking at first we'll just have something to push around the shows have some music on and then eventually me and me and my dad his pop pop were into rc's real heavy back when i was young so i think we might actually convert this over to rc maybe make it go up and down in the front but stay tuned it's going to be coming out we're going to start filming this pretty soon keep an eye out for it and as always please like subscribe comment, comment. <laughs> Bye, y'all. So right now, what we have, aluminum, eight gallon tank. We got dual Bayer 485s, okay? Quick thing about Bayer's. A lot of people run the full 44s. There's nothing wrong with full 44s. My opinion, my expert opinion, <laughs> 485s. Look, my OBS, I ran three full 44s. I put 
two 485s on it, changed my life. Here's the thing, the new 485s are 100% duty at 200 PSI. The full 44s are 100% duty at I think, 160? Mm, is it 160? I thought it was like 130. I know the buyer air pressure switch cuts off at 160. Yeah, but I think it's only, so they're only 100% duty I think at 135. Which means, 100% duty means for every minute it's ran, it needs that many minutes to cool down before you should restart. Also, it means, from what I understand, is up to 135 pounds. If it's 100% duty at 135 pounds, it's going to be super efficient to 135 pounds. From 135 pounds to 200, where your pressure switch is going to cut off, it's going to take forever. These bad boys have a little bit higher CFM rating than the full 44, and they're 100% duty to 200 PSI. That means they're badass till, till your pressure switch cuts off. Two of them on an eight or 10 gallon tank is amazing. If you put two of these bad boys on a three gallon tank on a mini truck, we hopping some shit. I recommend, man, this camera's heavy. I recommend the 385s. A dual packs, shy, maybe a couple, yeah, 500, couple dollars shy, 500. Look, when it comes to these airbag kits, you get what you pay for, man. Don't go the cheap route. This is a vehicle that you're running up and down the road. Not only for your safety, but for me and my kids' safety. The people behind me, the people beside me. That's the other people you need to worry about. Buy quality stuff. Get a qualified, trained professional like me and Youngster at Carport Customs to install your junk. Or to install your good stuff on your piece of junk. That, that's usually what we do. I mean, many truckers, we buy a $500 truck, we throw $50,000 into it. And, and then we sell it. Yeah, it's still a piece of junk. And then we sell it for like four thousand know? dollars. Yeah. So, what we have is four eighty fives on the buy airs. If you don't know, this is a check valve for your buy air. A lot of problems you'll have with these buy airs not working is this check valve. This is the weak point of a buy air. These check valves, man, they're junk. I like to pull them out and put SMC uh, ones in there. So if you ever have a one that's not pumping, the best way to know. If your buy air is pumping, turn it on, pull the cap, I mean the filter, there's a hole right here. Put your finger on it. If it's pumping, it's going to suck in. If it doesn't suck you in, she ain't pumping. If it ain't pumping, if you can't get any out of it, first place to check is the check valve. Pull it off, undo it, and then see if it pumps. If it pumps, you know your check valve was bad. If it's still not pumping, something's wrong inside. If you notice, we have no water traps in between our two buy airs. There is a reason for that. You're not gonna stop condensation from getting in this tank. You're just not. So, got a drain at the bottom. We put our water separators between the tank and the valves. Because at the end of the day, that's what you're worried about. You're worried about the valves. Stop worrying about getting condensation in your tank. Get an aluminum tank. That way all you worry about is water. Get a water separator. Do not buy the ones from Harbor Freight. Do not buy the water separators from Tractor Supply. Buy AVS or SMC. For one thing, they're all aluminum. There's no plastic on them. They hold out better and they're rated for, I think, 200 PSI. Um, Get my old fat ass up in here a little bit. So, like I say, two, two compressors coming in. We got a drain at the bottom. This is your supply line to our slam specialties, three-eighths valves. This is a four corner. So you have one line going in. You have a fitting here, goes to the front, one that goes to the back. Same thing on the other side. Um, it actually has dual inlets. That way, no matter where you put it, you can get a line going to it. You can run two lines in it. There's no need for it. I'll run one line in. It comes with an actual uh, cap for the other side. You put it in, you're good. The new slam boxes actually already have the fittings for your air, for your air gauges. So these are, these are 3 eighths lines going in and out. These are 1 eighth fittings for your, uh, all four corners for your, your bags. 
inside the truck, we have dual needle gauges, two dual needle gauges. So one of them will have your two fronts, the other will have your two backs. You don't have to run gauges. I personally like to run gauges. That way I'm never guessing where my truck is sitting. Once you get your setup going, you get your skate where you know you can skate and still turn. See what pressure it is, boom, you're good. Get it up to where, hey, I'm pulling in a car, uh, pulling in somewhere and I need to be off the ground. Boom, you got that. You know, um, That way you can see where your truck's at, you know what your, your PSIs are, and then you just you look at your PSI and you know where your truck's sitting. Um, pressure switch. This is a 165-200 pressure switch, which means when the tank gets down to 165 pounds, the compressor cuts on. Um, it might be a 145-200. Anyway, your small number is what, when the tank gets to that low number, the compressors will cut, cut on. Your higher number, which this one is 200, means the compressors cut off at 200. Um, to wire it, you have two, just basically in and out. It's a switch inside here. So this goes to a power source. This goes to, we're going to put in a pack, 80. a pack 80. We'll show you guys how to do that. So this will come from a power source. This will go to the pack 80, which the compressors are wired to. And this is basically the switch in there. We'll show you more about it when we wire it in. Um, for your valves, you have a ground, and then you have a wiring harness shoved up under here for your switch box. Again, we're going to show you how to run that today. Um, pretty much that's pretty much it. This actual little box has got eight valves in it. This has got a three-link wishbone in it. Technically, we don't need independent in the back. Because you can't do a side to side with these anyway. I'm not going to tie the two rears in a T. We're going to put them on all four corners. That way you can still control each bag. It's just when you do the back, make sure your pressures are the same in the back. Um, yeah, that, that, that's pretty much it. When, when I go to wiring all of this, I'm going to show you all how to wire it. When we go to plumbing it, actual plumbing it, we'll show you guys how to plumb it. This is our front bag, passenger side. This is our front back bag. Driver side, basically, it needs to come in over here. This one goes in here. This one goes in here. Bada bing, bada boom. We just need to run it some more. Run the two from the back. Bam, we're good. Wire it up. Hit switches. Get all the bitches. So, all right, so here we are under the truck. This is uh, your Pack 80 relay. So this line here <clears throat> is coming from uh, the battery under the hood. It's your main power source. This leg has the two uh, via the power wires from the via air compressors. One Pack 80 will run two two 485s, no problem. Um, this leg right here <clears throat> comes from your power. Um, I'm sorry. This leg right here comes from your pressure switch. It is basically the on and off switch for this Pack 80 relay. This here is the ground. So we come from our pressure switch here, and then your pressure switch has two legs on it. So it's also a switch. Power in, power out, power in, power out to your Pack 80. This power comes in. From under, it's snaked all the way to inside the truck. I hook it to your key switch. That way when your truck's cut off, it cuts everything off back here. I also run it through a toggle switch. That way, if you need your truck running and your compressors, you don't need them on at the time, you can cut them off. You're not relying just on the pressure. So when wiring up your ABS switch box to any valves, that you're gonna wire them up to. If you look right here, I can't, I don't think I can focus in for you to really see them. On this tag, it tells you what every one of these colored wires are for. This other end that it's on is the harness that plugs into the SLAM specialty. Just imagine these going to your 
any any valves that you got so you got passenger these are not the colors but i'm just giving you an example so like passenger front up passenger front down driver front up driver front down rear so on and so forth if you get something like a slam specialty box or you get an abs switch box um, abs valve box anything like that more than likely they're going to come with a piece of paper that tells you what their colors go to you know which function it does so you just if you've got those two that piece of paper and this tag right here then you just match them up this one with the fuse in it is your actual power but lo i didn't get no paperwork or i don't have a avs I took, i've got old school valves what you do all of these are going to your valves so these need power power to fill power to dump so what i like to do is i will get a power wire just just a random power wire hook it to something just so you got power to it and touch it and see what it does your individual valves have their own ground on them the valve boxes and your avs slam boxes all those have grounds too once you ground your valves you can come in and just touch this with a power and you'll hear the solenoid click Put air in your tank, hit this with power, see what it does. It might dump it, it might raise it, whatever. Once you figure that out, you go on here, say if this one was passenger front fill. Go find that on your switch box, hook it up, hit the button, see if it works. And just so on and so forth. Just go through process of elimination and figure them out. So that's how you wire up a switch box. There's going to be lots of opportunity to wire to wire, show you how to touch it. And wire it up and things like that but just a quick if you've got the switch box abs switch box or if you have it's like a slam valves or something like that that has the wiring harness to it you can get different length wiring harnesses more than likely those are going to come with a piece of paper i know the slam does i know the abs does they come with a wiring diagram that tell you each color and you just you just match them up on the two sides so 